Can you really score an Irma's Birkin or a Kelly with low to no spend? Yes, I know three years ago I've done this in Paris, but now I've tried a different destination which is within the United States and this is Hawaii. It's actually my first time going to Hawaii and also my first time, of course, getting an Irma's Kelly or Birkin from Hawaii. So in this video, I am going to walk you through the entire process of how I've done it, including you know my experience, my tips, the research that I've done, uh, the price of everything, and even the price of all the baits. So if that is what you're interested in seeing, then keep on watching. First, let me talk about the research that I've done and uh, what I recommend you to do too if that is your intention. If getting an Irma's Birkin or Kelly is what you're after, then definitely look at these two places. And especially if you're bilingual, um, look at Red. This is a Pinterest-like app, but it's all in Chinese. And on there, there are a lot of people who talked about their experience buying an Irma's Birkin, Kelly, or Constance from Hawaii. So that is definitely a good place to look at. If you do not speak Chinese, if you do not read Chinese, there's also a very good site to look at, and that is the Purse Form. This is the place that I it's like my go-to source to researching anything bag related ever since like, I don't know, 2017. Um, I've been using this site and it is just so good because people talked about their experience scoring a Birkin or Kelly or any other bag in Hawaii. You can see in real time what bag offers people are getting and also advice on how to score a Birkin or Kelly. Now let's talk about the strategy. So my number one strategy is do not ask for a Birkin or Kelly right way. And yes, it's a little counterintuitive and it is a little different from Paris because if you are buying the bag from Paris, you can ask for a Birkin or Kelly right away because that is how the Paris system works. But anywhere else in the world, especially in the United States, it is going to decrease your likelihood of getting a bag. So just think of it this way. It's like a supply and demand kind of thing. If you are Hermes and you get tons of demand of people just wanting the bag, wanting the bag, wanting the bag, sooner or later, you're going to start to categorize these customers in a separate category. And it's almost like the more you ask for it, the more they don't want to give it to you because it just shows that you only like this one design of the brand and you don't really appreciate the bread in general. And because Hermes has such high demand, they want to be able to sell the you know popular bags to those who actually love the brand and not just those who are after you know the certain uh, popular bag styles. Are there exceptions of the rule? Maybe. <laughs> I do know there are very few people who get away with asking for the bag right away and they do get the bag, but most people who ask for the bag right away, they just get a one canned response, which is, we don't have any in stock, which, you know, uh, you can choose to believe it, but honestly, I don't really buy it because usually they just don't have stock for certain customers, but they do have stock for other customers. So if you want to have stock for you, if you do want to score a bag, then don't ask for the Birkin or Kelly or even Constance right away. Just don't ask for a popular stuff right away and to, you know, show appreciation for the rest of the brand. This is the game that they're playing. I know a lot of people are very annoyed with this because it's like not straightforward at all, but you have to keep in mind that this is a supply and demand thing. And because there's so high demand and so low supply, they do get to choose who they want to sell this bag to, which is a little counterintuitive because most of the time you think that, oh, if you have the money to pay for something, you can buy it. Not that case for Hermes. And the second thing is, is there a dress code? I think in Paris, there is a dress code. Um, you do want to dress kind of elegantly, sophisticatedly. You don't want to look too, you know, uh, too, what do you call it? Like too casual. But I don't think there's a dress code in Hawaii. And actually on the day that I got my Birkin, I was in like swimsuit. I was in straight on swimsuit. I'll post some pictures over here, but I was straight on in swimsuits. And I mean, my sales associate just kind of joked about it and said, wow, you look really different today. And I'm like, yeah, I just came from the beach, which, you know, it's Waikiki. It's like next to the beach. So of course, I would be in beach wear. And throughout the conversation, you also want to show your expertise to show that you actually know about this brand and it's not just limited to Birkins or Kelly's because of course, they know that most customers are after the Birkins or the Kelly's. But if you also show knowledge about, you know, certain styles or certain colors that you like, or, you know, just appreciation for other categories of Irma's goods, it also, from my experience, it also increases the likelihood of you scoring a Birkin or Kelly. Again, they want customers or clients who love the brand holistically, and they're not just after the Birkin or Kelly, because it's kind of a given that most people are after the Birkins and Kelly's. 
And now let me walk through the timeline. So I arrived in Hawaii on the 22nd and I did visit the store, but I did not meet the sales associate who sold me the Birkin. So I actually met her on the 23rd, which is my second day in Hawaii. And then we kind of chit chatted a bit and I made some purchases uh, around 9K in spend. So let me see, uh, let me read you the actual spend. And some people might ask, hey, does the spend actually, um, does it actually matter how much money you spend prior to getting the Birkin? My experience is it depends. Some people say, you know, the spend is like 0 0.6 to 1. So let's say if your Birkin's like $10,000, then you have to spend like $6,000 in order to get an offer. But of course, it's not anything that Hermes officially says. Um, I do think it will help your case if you do make some spend prior to buying the bag because it shows that again, you appreciate the brand overall and you're not just after, you know, the one most popular bag that they have. And so on the 23rd, I spent $9,398. And I'll also do a separate unboxing video of all the baits that I bought, but I actually did not buy anything that I did not want to begin with. So everything that I purchased, they were already on my wish list. So I was not, you know, forced to buy anything. I was not pushed to buy anything that I did not like. So that is my experience on the 23rd. And then the 24th is actually my sales associate's day off. So um, we did not communicate via text or of course in person. And one thing to keep in mind is that when they have days off, they actually do not respond to text. At least from my experience, they do not respond to text. So don't freak out if your sales associate does not respond to you. It's totally normal. It's just that, you know, they tend to not respond when they're on vacay. And you know, not everyone's an alcoholic like in my past life. Um, I tend to respond to emails and text messages on my off days, but you you know, Irma sales associates, they don't tend to do that. And so on the 25th, I got a text from her. So um, I'm just read you the text. So um, on that day, I reminded her, I was like, hey, this is Sherry, I hope you had a relaxing day off. I'm wondering what's a good time for me to visit and if there's any surprises for me. And again, I did not hint like specifically what I'm after, even though like throughout your chat, she kind of asked about my preference, what I'm after. And I said, Birkin 30 and Cray. Um, and she said, it's a very, very difficult one, um, which I understand. And so then she said, hey, Cherry, give me your preferred colors. Still not in stock, but let me know what colors you like. So I gave her her five options and um, she also asked me what styles I prefer three or four styles and I said Birkin Kelly or Lindy and I said maybe Constance too but top one wish list is definitely Birkin 30 or 25 in gray flexible and hardware and she said I'll let you know and I waited a whole day until Sunday which is the 26th and I said do we have any update and uh, by now I'm like a little nervous because I am leaving Hawaii or I was leaving Hawaii the next day on Monday so I was like do we have any update because I already spent you know 9k and like, of course, it would be nice to have a bag after 9K spend and, you know, after building this rapport with a sales associate because I probably won't be back in Hawaii, like, you know, the next month or anything uh, quick like that. And so um, I asked her on Sunday and she said, hi, Sherry, please wait. I'll check for you. And um, I waited again a couple hours, no response. <laughs> she just kind of like, you know, stopped responding after she said she'll check for me. And um, it was a couple hours. I was a little worried and I did have like a dinner, uh, dinner dance thing called Luau at Hawaii. And um, it is a little far from Waikiki. It's like over an hour drive there. And so the whole night I will be gone. So I was really worried. I was like, hey, I have this luau thing that starts at four. Is it possible for me to visit you before that? And fortunately she said, yes. Um, she actually gave me a call and she told me about the bag that she got for me. So I am going to show you right now. Okay, it is this giant bag over here. And when I got this bag, it was actually in the, like, what do you call it? Like in the plastic wrap. So it's like totally brand new. No one has even seen it yet. No one has opened it. So uh, let's look at what's inside. Ta da da da.
so this is the bag. Can you guess what color it is? It is, it smells gorgeous by the way. Like all Irma's bags, they just have this really gorgeous smell that I just really love. This is the handle. <gasps> okay. This is actually not on my wish list. So what is on my wish list? Let me just tell you. Um, my wish list, I said I want Cray Noir Gold Etoupe or Rosakura. But this one obviously is not. <laughs> this one is actually in this beautiful avocado green. And so when she told me about this on the phone, I was a little hesitant because I'm like, green. I don't really own a lot of green things. And um, it's definitely not, you know, my number one wish list. It's not on my wish list, but it's a freaking Birkin. <laughs> if you ask me if I want a green Chanel, I'd probably be like, no, but it's a freaking Birkin. Like, you know, I become a lot more flexible when it comes to Birkins because Birkins just have that magical power. And this is actually a Birkin 30. Ta -da! So this is what she looks like. Uh, let me give you the specs. So this is the um, uh, Birkin 30 in Epsom leather, and this is uh, Vert Quicket. <laughs> Vert Quicket. I think this is the uh, color, and this is in this avocado green color. So, so gorgeous. And let me just do a mod shot right now. So this is going to be how it looks like on me. I think 30 is just a beautiful, beautiful size. Um, in a couple of videos before, you can probably see I own a 25 and I also own a Kelly 28. So this is a size comparison. You can see the 30 is like a little taller, um, a lot wider too. A lot wider. And um, width wise, it is also bigger. So you can see the two together. And um, honestly, I really like the 30 size. I know right now small bags are really popular, but I personally care more about the utility value more than anything. So I decided to ask for a 30. I didn't actually ask for a 25. I know a lot of people go to a store and they're like, I want a 25. Um, I want a 25 in Kelly or Birkin and they just want smaller sizes or even like mini Kelly. But I personally, I prefer like larger sizes. So it's like more useful. So this is what the baby looks like. And it's also in gold hardware. I personally really, really love gold hardware. I feel like especially with a warmer color like the avocado green the gold hardware really enhances it a lot more and just gives it that really cute summery color and i can imagine myself wearing this with like a white dress or even with like some pink i think yeah it would also look really nice with some pink as contrast so that is my unboxing now let me give you some tips on scoring a Birkin or Kelly. And these are also some things that I personally have not done. Um, so I think I got extremely lucky with this purchase, but I do think these tips will help you if you want to score a Birkin or a Kelly or a Constance. So number one is research on your sales associate. I have not done this. This one, which is you know kind of shocking because I am going there with the intention of getting something special for my birthday, but um, I did not do any research on sales associates. I did not go on forums until like the day of and you know, um, yeah, that's a whoopsies on my part. So that is definitely tip number one is research on sales associates. And of course, what works for other people might not work for you, but at least you get a vague sense of, you know, which sales associates are known to have good customer service, um, which ones might be, you know, more helpful in terms of getting you something that is on your wish list, because there are different sales associates out there. And of course, sales associates, at the end of the day, they're just humans. Sometimes, you know, some essays that work for others don't work for you. And when I say don't work for you, um, there are some, you know, major red flags. For example, if you're trying something out, does a sales associate actually help you, you know, look at whether or not it suits you? Do you look good wearing the scarf or the shoe? You know, do you look good wearing this uh, like necklace? Uh, the good ones will actually give you some advice. And I prefer those. Like I prefer sales associates who actually look at the items and tell me whether or not I look good in them because I want a second opinion. And um, honestly, like my husband, I love him and everything, but he is not a fan of like giving me advice because he's just like, you look good in everything, babe. So that's not really helpful. So I find it helpful to have someone to actually give me advice on whether or not something looks good. Um, and also, uh, sometimes it might be also helpful to tell your sales associate about the intention of this trip. For example, for this trip is to celebrate my birthday. It's also like a wedding gift. Um, just a lot of things that we're celebrating. So I wanted to make sure that the sales associate also knows about this. 
even though this specifically sales associate that I worked with, I don't think she really cared. Like every time I tried to tell her my story and why I came here to shop, she kind of just like, you know, switched to a different subject. So it also depends on which one you're talking to. But from the stories that I've heard, a lot of people found more luck when they have like a backstory of why they came to shop at Hermes or why they want to buy this bag. These tend to help, you know, their um, likelihood of scoring a bag. And you also want to look at the responsiveness of the sales associate. I think a mistake that I've made is I just blindly <laughs> spent 9K um, and basically build a profile with the sales associate without really understanding her and, you know, her way of working. And and um, I just did not feel like I knew her well enough. And so when she was like not responding to my text messages, I was a little, a little bit low key freaking out. I was like, uh, does that mean like, you know, is she trying to help? Like, is she helping? I don't know because she's not responsive. And so you might also want to, you know, just dip your toes a little bit on your very first purchase just to see whether or not this sales associate is actually responsive, whether or not she's helpful. And of course it's like she, he, you know, could be a he too. Um, you, yeah, you just want to make sure that, um, you don't, you know, blindly spend all your money and get everything on your wish list without understanding this sales associate and it really works both ways. Like when I say, oh, Hermes, because they're so high demand, they choose their customers, they choose, you know, who to sell their popular bags to. It's also you, like you as a customer, you have your power, like your purchasing power, and you can choose how you want to spend your money. You know, you could be working with sales associate A, but if SAA, like sales associate A, if she is not responsive, if she's not helpful, like you don't have to buy anything from her. Like this is not mandatory for you to purchase things from the first person you work with. And um, even from my experience, I actually did not purchase anything from one of the sales associates who you know I worked with because she wasn't really responsive on the next day, which I later found out that is because it's her day off, but I did not know. It was like over two days of her not responding. And even on the day that she was working, um, she stopped responding at 4 p.m. And so I was like a little sketched out and I decided not to buy things from her, but she's actually a recommended sales associate according to other people. And so again, like what works for you might not work for others and vice versa. And you wanna make sure that this sales associate is actually you know, responsive, she actually is helpful and you guys can actually communicate. And um, also in Hawaii, not every sales associate is like super fluent in English. That is from my experience. and. Um, um, so you might want to make sure that you can actually understand each other and there's no language barrier. This is also extremely important because you don't want to, you know, uh, have your sales associate to be someone who you have a hard time communicating with. I think that will also be an issue. And last tip is that if you are going with a friend or if you're going with your significant other, definitely try out your luck at two different stores. I heard that because the two stores are, you know, competing with each other, they don't like it when you purchase from both stores and it actually decreases your chance of scoring a bag. But if you use different profiles, let's say you create a profile at Waikiki and your um, significant other, if he creates a profile at the mall, which is, um, is it Alamoana? I think that's how you pronounce it. If he creates a profile at the other store, it actually increases the likelihood because it's like, you know, two people, they're trying for a bag. Two profiles are trying for a bag and not just one profile. But of course, like nothing's guaranteed. Sometimes people do this trick and they still can't score a bag and that's completely normal too. Also, if you currently have a home store and you currently have an account in the United States, it's actually not recommended for you to use that same profile to purchase a bag in the Waikiki or in the Hawaii store. And that is because Hermes really values loyalty and they wanna make sure that if you have a home store, you just stick to your home store. So from my experience, I actually don't have a home store. I only purchase from Paris. And even when I made purchases in the United States, um, I did not use my own account from what I remember. I think I Use my dad's account. And so I did not have any home store in LA. That's why I was able to just create an account under my name. But I've heard stories of people, you know, using their friend's account, you know, using their friend's name. Um, just make sure that the friend is actually on the trip with you because they actually also look at your credit card to make sure it's the same name. There are loopholes that, you know, help you get around this. There are some debit cards, especially I think uh, ones with uh, union pay that does not have your name on the card. I don't know for sure. That is not what I've done, but that's what I read about. So there are some workarounds if you do have an account already in the mainland stores in the U.S., but um, of course, don't quote me on that because I have not tried it myself and 
Of course, this is something that you also want to use with caution. And lastly, I think there are two main types of sales associates in my, you know, multiple experiences of shopping for a Bergen or a Kelly. And um, it is like this. There is a type of sales associate that, you know, they're just very straightforward. For example, if you're looking at certain things and they think you should, you know, build up your profile more, then they'll recommend you things. And maybe they'll even tell you a certain dollar amount, you know, a certain quota for you to meet. And that way is very straightforward. So if you're a straightforward kind of person and you just want to, you know, get your dream bag in a certain time within certain spend, then maybe that's a good sales associate for you. But of course, like there is no such thing as like needing a spend. Um, this is not official. It is not an Hermes like official policy. So if this happens, it's just, you know, the certain sales associate has nothing to do with Hermes itself. And there's also a second one, which is um, the sales associate just wants you to get what you love. And um, this sales associate does not talk about spend, does not talk about quota, does not talk about, you know, spend limit or anything like that. This sales associate just wants to make sure that whatever you buy is what you love. And they also don't guarantee any bags. Um, and honestly, nobody guarantees any bags, but this type of sales associate, they also don't really mention bags and bags really come as a surprise. Um, they don't hint at bags. And there's a third type of sales associate, um, which is, I believe, the worst kind, which is they give you fluffy promises. So they're like, oh, um, you know, buy this, buy that. You will, you know, get the bag, lots of hints about bags. But in the end, they don't give you any bags. And that, to me, that's like the worst type because they tend to push you to buy things that you don't actually like. And, you know, you're all hopeful because you think, oh, by buying this item, you'd get a bag. So it's all worth it. But honestly, like, my advice is do not buy anything that you don't like because the third type of sales associate, they just want to meet their sales quota. And you can feel this as a customer. Um, if the sales associate doesn't even look at the things that you try on, if the sales associate does not, you know, even consider what suits you and what doesn't suit you. If the sales associate just like pushes you things that you clearly told them that you don't like. Like for example, if you don't like Irma's clothes and the sales associate kept pushing you clothes, that is a red flag and you might want to turn the other way because this is, you know, a relationship that works both ways, right? You want to be able to help out the sales associate in terms of meeting, you know, their commissions quota and whatnot, but the sales associate should also care about whether or not the things you buy actually suit you and you actually look good in the things that you buy. And if, you know, you don't help them and they don't help you, then this is a broken link. There's a broken relationship and it doesn't really work no matter, you know, how many fluffy promises there are. Because think about it this way. If the sales associate doesn't even care about whether or not something looks good on you, do you think they'd even care to try that hard to fight for your dream back? Not really, right? And of course, like there are a lot of, you know, horror stories when it comes to uh, playing the Hermes game and scoring the Hermes bag. And um, I do think it is definitely a game that you should play at your own risk. If let's say $10,000 is all you have in your bank account, definitely do not, you know, gamble your money and, you know, spend it all on Hermes baits because you'll never know. Like there are a ton of people who spend, you know, two times the, the like Birkin amount on baits and they don't actually get a bag. There are people who spend three times, four times, five times, and they don't get a bag. This is not guaranteed. This is definitely a game that you're playing at your own risk. So you want to only buy things that you actually like. So there's no like regrets. Even when I was, you know, kind of um, worried whether or not I'd get a bag on this trip, I wasn't like, oh, let me return the rest of my stuff because I need this money. No, I was like, oh, let me just treasure my stuff. Like I still like the purchases, the baits that I got. It's just that it'd be better if I also got the bag. So that is my story of how I got this beautiful Birkin 30 in Epsom leather in this beautiful avocado green color. And in the next video, I'll also unbox my Birkin baits and I'll also be talking about how I scored a different bag on the same trip. So see you in my next video.